Wow. Good news. They're just about cooked. Bad news. They ain't nothing special. Hi, right, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, welcome back. If you've been here before, and welcome to La Fournette, a little village just down from Val d'Isere in the Teens District, up in the French Alps in France. This is where I've been hanging out for about the past five, six days, snowboarding and exploring around, and it's been insane. But we've been warned by a traffic warden. We've got a haul out of here today, so that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. And I'll tell you a little bit more about where we're going when we get on the road. I've been over here in the French Alps for about the past six weeks. I came over to try and find good snowy conditions for some great snowboarding. And in all honesty, I've probably done about 14 days and about four of them have been good conditions. It's basically just been really hot all the time. And for the past two seasons, this area or the whole of Europe and the Alps has had crap snow. Like I say, I've had a few good days and I'm hoping I can get one last more good day in a few episodes time. But what I'm gonna start doing is heading back towards England now. I figured I'd hit a couple more ski resorts and then a few more spots trying to work my way over to Calais, which is exactly where we're gonna start off today. I'm gonna be heading down to a place called Val Forens. So I've got a wicked looking spot to haul up there hopefully tonight, but we do need to pick up some supplies on the way but for now. Let's get ourselves down to one of these super marches and see what we can find. All right, check this out on the left. I'm not going to stop, but little parking space. And here on the right. If you've been following the series, you've now been down in teams for about five days now with Nathan. Nathan's headed back to England today. He's got a ferry in a couple of days time, but it's been really difficult for car camping around this area. We've been moved on by police, tow trucks, and then this morning we were moved on by a traffic warden. Just basically don't want you in this area, but I had a good talk with the traffic warden and he told me that these little spots on this road, sort of out of the towns, he says they have no legal right to be able to move you on because wild camping and the right to roam is in effect in, in France. I mean, look, here's a wicked spot right here. You can park up here all night long. Or well, maybe not because this is in a village. But these lay bars on the side of the road. Obviously, the thing with it is, if it had been a really heavy, snowy winter this year, then you're stuck up on here on the side of the road somewhere waiting for the, the snow plough to clear the road. But hey ho, you could get free parking and be up here for a few weeks with no bother. I'm trying to scope it out. If I came back next year, for example, I'd like to hit this resort maybe. And yeah, here's the options. Here's all the van liners. We've got choices here then. We've got the Intermarche and then we've also got the Super U or Super U. I don't know. I think I'm going to try the Super U. Is, I think it's a bit cheaper. We'll find out. days mate i've been in there about an hour and 20 minutes so long it's nearly three o'clock this is madness we're running proper late it's going to be a chilled evening i'll tell you that much but i'm going to stop off at one more place and treat my belly to a maki d's before we set off up back into the mountains sounds like a plan 57 euro about 50 quid i've got enough for five meals and a few bits plenty of chocolate i'm happy days let's go well another mad mountain drive look at this thing i don't know what it is some sort of mosque that mosque temple or the old church or something on top of the rock pretty mad gotta say though 
do really like the road network over here. It's a bit chaotic to get your head round, but once you have, yeah, it just works. I don't know, all these mountain roads and then the switch backing into different areas like the motorways and dual carriageways back home, but it's not like back home. It's totally unique, but yeah, it just works, man. I've never been caught in a traffic jam, I think, once, and that was coming through some major city at rush hour. Oh yeah, Chamonix. For the most part, it's just, they're enjoyable to drive on. Even the B roads, because I was in the like the motorways or the toll roads originally, and yeah, they've got like a B road that runs almost adjacent to them that's just as good and nearly as quick. Yeah, really impressed, man. I don't know if it's like this all over Europe, probably not, but France has kind of got it sorted. Yeah, man, this is us. Oh, look at this switchback road coming up. No way. Yep, this is definitely us. Up into the mountains. Oh, shit. no, that was us to the right. Oh, cock. Oh, shit. just missed it. Going the wrong way. Uh, good news. Santa seems to have found an alternate route. We're about 40 minutes away. Next stop, Les Bellyville. The three valleys, man. Let's see how green it is. Gotta say it, loving this drive. There's another spot. There's spots all the way along this road to camp out. We'd have no problem. Let's see how far along we can get. The one I'm looking at looks epic. Fingers crossed. Well, this is looking like a spot right here on the bike. Right near a ski lift, but I think I'm gonna keep going to the spot. More spots here. Honestly, don't know if you got to pay or not. It doesn't look like it, if I'm honest. And then right at the ski lift, no way. Very tempting, boy. Keep moving. I think this is us on the right. Continue straight, then turn right. Oh no, don't tell me it's paid. Oh, this looks random. Let's have a look. Oh, please don't be paid. Self-service tow away, what does that mean? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I like this side of the car park with an amazing mountain view for the night. Well, maybe over there near them picnic tables. Give me a minute. Let's have a peruse. I have actually just had a word with somebody over here. I was wondering what these signs are all about down there and uh, apparently it just means don't park over here because yeah, that's where they park the big truck that clears the road. Not that I think it will need clearing at the minute, but it'll be all right. I've had a little look around actually already. I'll tell you what, this guy with the van. Prime spot, perfectly flat. And, <laughs> been there a while, but check out the views from the back. Wicked, mate. You can see <laughs> straight onto the slopes. And it actually looks pretty good conditions. No idea where you ski down to. And then it goes all the way down there as well. Up and across. Val Franz is down the way where all the big snow is. But, I'm not sure, I was just thinking about it. I don't think I'm gonna to snowboard tomorrow. I think I'm gonna explore the area, maybe do a couple of hikes. We could be here for a couple of days. It's only Wednesday today. I guess I'm just gonna piece it together as I go along, to be honest. But I need to prioritize first and get the kettle on. Oh, well, I've gotta say it, I'm really liking this area, mate. Not just this spot, the whole area. It feels a lot more welcoming for van life if you know what I mean just driving in and seeing all the vans parked up in all the villages even this little village just over the way I've no idea what it's called it looks like there's a spot up there within spitting distance of a lift with about at least 10 vans parked up there's a dude up the way here and there's another van pulled in earlier as well that teens area in all honesty is an absolute ruddy nightmare they just didn't want you there I think if you were looking for a place where you could spend a whole season and have all your amenities and everything on hand with 600 kilometers a piece, yeah, first impressions are good of this place. You got to think we're in Les Bellyville or just on the edge of it, but that's the area, Bellyville. So that's the bottom of the three valleys, like I've said, and you're right on the edge of it as well. So you've got 600 kilometers that way and another three kilometers, you've got 150 kilometers that way. 750 kilometers a piece 
for about three or four months of the season. Not a bad future prospect, Phil. Just saying. And look, I'll hold my hands up. Ah, now we're going for food. I had wanted to do some more authentic meals on this trip, but finding ingredients in a foreign land, in a foreign shop, it just hasn't been easy. I'd look for fog legs and I'd look for snails and I didn't get them. So I've just tried to do the best I can to feed myself and not starve. And I've got to be honest, some bloody ready meals are really good. <laughs> really easy. But we have got a pretty good set of ingredients for the next few days and episodes. Starting with, oh mate, oh mate. Well, tonight, anyway. Yeah, cordon bleu. It's French, isn't it? It's just cordon bleu. This thing, look at this bad boy. Oh my days, what is it? It's a panini, breakfast one. Oh, I'm having that in the morning, don't you know? Look at the bacon, man. The bacon's crap, dude. That's the best you can get. Get six slices, about two bloody quid, man. It's ridiculous. Don't matter where or when, whatever shop, I just couldn't find a decent pack of bacon, man. Rashes, you know? It's all like hams and cut meats and cold meats and... Uh, yeah, like break bacon seems like a speciality they just have in for the foreigners or something. So, yeah, that's all I could get. More important for tonight. Cordon bleu. With a few side orders. As long as one of them ain't spilt all over me fridge. Oh, bloody Nora. In all honesty, ow, don't cut your hand open. This is why I'm doing it. Because I've got an half a tin of sweet corn from last night's bill to go with it that needs using. Yeah. Good location as well, this for a season, you know. Not just for the snowboarding. Ah, like if you wanted to boss off somewhere and do something else. You're only three hours from Turin in Italy, eight hours from Barcelona and everything that goes with it going down towards there. Yeah, pretty sweet. Andorra's down that way as well, eh? Just saying. Right, what's the end of the world destruction saying on this bad boy? I'm thinking it's going to be pretty simple, don't you know? Oh, yep. Yeah. Crap, look how small they are, dude. That sucks. Oh. What? Bit of the box. They always come in separate wrappers. Doesn't matter what you buy. Everything comes in a separate wrapper. I had burgers the other day. Three of them in a pack. When I opened the pack, they were in these separate plastic packs with little rippy things on them. And segregated. Oh, I don't know what you mean. But, you know, you can pull them apart. That was random, man. It is what it is. Packaging Omega. Uh, yeah. 10 minutes in the ridge. Light heat. Maybe 12. Till they're nearly burnt. Right. The time has gone off. I can hear seepage. And I can smell burning. Oh. Whoa! Mm, we may have not cooked them enough <laughs> i don't know they've been going about 12 minutes i'm guesstimating so yeah on with the next oh stage oh that's hot and covered in grease minging oh, i guess though while that does its thing we could actually test one of these to check it is actually cooked properly i don't know 12 minutes but it's been in the ridge so that's just mental Drippy cheese in there, aren't they? So close to being on my bed clothes. So close. Damn you. Bloody... Oh! Now it's on the carpet. Fantastic. It's weird. It's like a plasticky cheese. I don't even know that that's cheese. Oh, it is. Ugh. Wow. Good news. They're just about cooked. Bad news. They ain't nothing special. Whoa. I'll tell you that much. But... With the remains of the sweet corn and some really, really nasty mashed potato. Powder stuff, found it in a box. Oof, we should not, really is rank. But yeah, that's tonight's meal. And I think I'm gonna munch it. Try and get a good signal and watch something. Not sweat to death. And I'll catch you in the morning. Well, honestly, no, it's not. It's afternoon. 
I've been busy this morning. I've been down to Val Forens and I've also been out and renting myself some snowshoes. I don't know if I need them today. But I'm heading down to Belleville for a little bumble. Looks like a really nice hike around the countryside and villages around here. So fingers crossed, we're about five minutes from the spot. Well, got to be honest. I'm 99.9%, make that 120% sure we're not going to need these snowshoes today, but hey ho, we've got them in case. This trail, it's an official one, I don't know what it's called, I've not looked, but it cuts between the villages around here, through the countryside, and should be a wicked nice little bumble, with some amazing freaking views, mate. Look at this, pure quintessential Alpine village in the French Alps, mate. This is Les Billabelles and it's the lowest or the most southern part of the three valleys and it looks a tidy little spot doesn't it in springtime i think today is the first day of spring official so yeah let's not gripe too much about the greener winter's done and we're into summertime and what that brings as well dang i just looked at the map hey it's supposed to be 3.6 miles well i gotta tell you it looks a bit of a beast mate we reckon hiking over to yonder and then possibly even that little village over there and then right traversing around these mountains. I'm supposed to be going the other way around. I don't know. It looks a bit much. Bloody hell, 3.6 miles, my ass. This looks miles, dude. Ah, oh, gay bod. Just gonna say it. You're not getting that view in the Peak Districts or the Lake Districts, are you, mate? Wow, what a stunner, man. So sights and lucky to be here, man. Last few days just sucking it in, you know. I know, oh yeah, the name of the trail. This place, St. Martin de Belleville, and then it's something like Villy Ranger and Chat Large. Oh well, no, not Chat Large, Chat Lard. That was the one. Yeah, careful they say the last one. Oh my days, mate, look at this thing. Look at the snow chains on them wheels, man. Oh, mate, that's just a world of pain, that is, isn't it? Try and get them on and off. Screw that dude, but this thing looks a beast. Look at that plough on the front. Not messing, eh? <sighs> what am I getting licensed with one of them at some point? I don't know. This is like the trucks, the old forkies and such, but yeah, the outdoor ones. That's where the money's at, isn't it? Big trucks like them, man. You do. <laughs> Look at the state of them though, mate. Ain't messing. Bloody Nora. Want some nice tidy gloves. Thick ones. It rip your hands off. Ah, just remembered. I'm doing it in the reverse order, aren't I? Le Chatelard. There we go. Into the first village, or rather, the last village, if you'd done it the right way around. But hey ho. To be honest, it looks a bit of a small settling. There's not too much here, but it does have a good view over to Pellyville. Wicked, mate. I'd assume that place would be a bit bigger. Maybe that's not the main part of it. Maybe it stretches out and over. Hey ho. More wooden alpine and stone houses. I love them to bits, mate. They're amazing. I love to know how much one of these would cost. Look at this posh dude with his <laughs> gondola cabin in his garden, mate. What the heck is he using that for? Just a little chill out area. No way, mad. Oh, man. Look, he's sat down having a right giraffe. He's bringing me through all the nooks and crannies of the village. Damn, I can only imagine it. The normal sat nav giving me the wrong turn and then bringing the car down there or something, but yeah, this is wicked, mate. Look at that. All little alleyways. No street parking. I don't think I've ever seen an Alpine village that's such a tight network. This is mad. <laughs> Definitely needs to get on with the neighbours, don't you? Bloody hell. Look at that. That little yard and stuff. It's like a little Nepalese village or something. This is mental. I haven't got a freaking clue which one I'm supposed to be going. Crikey. I'll take the wrong turn and end up at the monastery. Get pulled in for 12 months. Do a little sabbatical or something. Bloody hell. I hope the car's all right. Maybe this way. Mad. Finally out the back side of the village and boom. Opening up to some amazing looking views, man. Wicked. I'm just looking at all this downhill. Thinking I'm gonna to have to do it the other way in a minute. Going up. Got it. Bloody hell. I'll tell you what though. <laughs> That's proper utilisation of the old solar power, isn't it? 
That's not messing about. Maybe hell. Mind. Let's get a good shot of it. No way. Check it out. This little farm down here. He's got one as well. Makes you wonder if the remnants of an old gondola station in the sky long gone or something. I don't know. Maybe. Good news, eh? We're going off beaten track finally to Villa Ranger. Oh, kind of off track, you know. All right, it stinks of cow poo, so yeah, we're in the countryside and we're going off track. Let's go. Okay, right, look, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that that Bellyville over there is not the main valley Bellyville from the Free Valley. Simple reason, I don't see a single gondola or anything or ski lift around here. But what I did notice is, look at these little villages. How do you think these developed over time? Do you think it was all from, like, alpine farming around here? There can't have been much mining around here. I don't see any remnants of mines or such like that to build up the population. The only thing I can think is farming. I mean, obviously, these villages have been here hundreds of years and slowly building up, building up, you know, but, yeah, just really intrigued. I'd like to know. I love things like that, like the history of it. How did it become what it is? We know how all that over the way became what it is now. That's all skiing and tourism, but yeah, these are the rural areas in the mountains, man. <sighs> Wicked. Right, next stop. Yeah, that next village. Oh, Villagard. Nope, somewhere else. <laughs> say it this is nice loving it mate away from all the villages just on a track ah oh, mate pure nature all around no one else man i'm gagging to get back here in the summer and do some mad hikes away from it all and just up into the peaks i just wish i had a little bit more time now for it but from here on in as i mentioned it's all about getting back to blighty in the next trip got some plans as well already oh. <laughs> we're like fighting between two angles from both ends of the spectrum this place is amazing i could stay here another two months and just meander around but yeah blighty's calling man i've got things to do there as well life throwing things at me left right and center on the road when stuff happens you know a bit of a waffle as well and i've found it all my life once you get off the sofa and you get out of the house and you start moving, especially further afield like these sort of places, yeah, opportunities not. I think it's come around. I could quite easily get a grind over here and stay for months if I wanted to, you know. Or equally, head off to Asia and do something there. Who knows? The opportunities are out there once you get moving. Now, yeah, coming into Villa Ranger then, and what looks like another abandoned car on the side of the village. It's probably not. We see loads of them over here in France. We've seen a few of some car parks in some big lake area we parked in and then all over Chamonix, all the car parks. There's like vans just been parked up for months on end with no one in them. It's all a bit random. I don't get it. But hey, Woo. this is not a bad little spot either, is it? Yet another village. A nice looking river running through it. Oh, man. Nice. I hope that dude's not totally got named. Ah, moving on. Well, gotta say it, first impressions. Oh, just bit me lip. But yeah, not that great. It's not as nice as all the other villages around here, is it? It looks a little bit beshackled, if I'm honest. But, uh, yeah, still nice, but not as nice. Let's keep it PC. Oh, wow. Seriously, that trail coming up from that village absolute beast and it just keeps on going but it does cut off a lot of the road sort of network or i don't know it's like a dirt trap but this is even more of a dirt trap nice though through the woodland sweat me blood and chunga off mine so hot today all uphill in one fell sweep 900 foot ah chuff Let's go 
drop these snowshoes off that were totally useless and uh, go see if we can procure our spot back up at the uh, car park. I doubt it very much, but we gather up. From the window to the wall, we get it lit up in it, big bouncing. We does it big up in it, big bouncing. Stacks and hit up in it, big bouncing. We get it lit up in it, big bouncing. Such a random route through the town. Check this. Into some apartments. Down some random lift. Oh, yeah. Good one, though. Got a nice little view. Out of the apartments and round the main gondola, don't you do? And finally, to the ski shop. <sighs> Van Chuck is still open. Power on. Moment of truth then. And let's see if that spot's still available. Oh, I can't quite tell from here. I see a motorhome roof, that's still there. Oh, there's a blue van still there. Oh, I don't think there's a space in front of him. I don't know, there might be. Oh, there is. Oh no, some doofus part like that. What a bomb chin. Well, I'm having it anyway. I'm back in in, you know. Woo! In there, lads, swimwear. Game on. You do. Let's not hit that 80 grand motor run. Try not to. Dude, I'm going in with the chocks. I'm not messing. <laughs> Boom time. Setting up shop for a couple of days, don't you know? And I think this is probably going to be the best point to end the episode. I think tomorrow I'm going to try and bag a day snowboarding and then start heading towards Calais. I must remember to put the ferry ticket first. If you've enjoyed this one, all the good stuff, hit the like button, subscribe to keep up the series. Definitely hit me in the comments. And as always, you know, you know, from an amazing, insane spot in the French Alps, mate, take it easy. Enjoy the camp. Get out there and stay stealthy. All right.